Thanks for the intro. It sounds like I'm traveling a lot when you talk about all these people I talk to. But for all the Americans who are here and who are jet lagged, I've built in a couple funny images so they wake you up. So if you're on Twitter, I know some people are really into time wasting, twitter.com slash gleonhardt, you can add me and follow me and Twitter me. My motto is compensation, not control. And I want to start by saying, I think I know how you feel. The internet and the music industry has lifted the music industry off the floor and made fun of them, immobilized them to a very large degree. NBC's uh, Jeff Zucker says, the content industries are being forced to trade analog dollars for digital pennies. And is that true? That is true. The value of content is greatly reduced because of all that stuff that happens on the web. What is the solution? I think you ain't seen nothing yet. There's the famous song, if you're old, you know, as old as I am, you may remember. The song, it's not even close to what we're going to see in the future. Broadband penetration will go from the 6% that it's now to 60%. Uh, global mobile penetration to 150% the ownership of computers, but what's even worse, of course, is the cost of internet access will completely decline and be free in some countries. The cost of storage will completely decline, and first of all, the skills required will get everybody online, including your great-grandmother. And then you have the alarm clock. Okay, right now, it's nothing. We're at the complete tip of the iceberg in terms of sharing. We're going to look at all these people, about four billion people sharing content, not just music, but sharing content, and we can't do this to them like some of us are envisioning to lock those people up. I think that's a very bad idea, first of all, because it doesn't make money. It doesn't give us compensation. What gives us compensation is the toll booth on the digital highway. Right, the place where we put the money machine, the coin machine, to pay us for the content. Right? I prefer to get compensation than to get control. So the four billion people sharing can be turned into money. This is a quote from Media Post talking about the 31,000 or so lawsuits that the RA undertook. Only one went to trial and was declared a mistrial. In the meantime, the revenues have gone down and down and down and down and down. That's both for digital, of course, they've gone up, but in general, it has gone down. So far, the focus on controlling music online has not resulted into solid new revenue streams. The people that have gotten the money from the lawsuits are the lawyers. All of you out there, to some degree, I'm sure involved in this. So we have a dilemma here. We have what I call the copyright dilemma. And make, let me make this totally clear. I'm not a copyright abolitionist, as they say. Oh, abortionist, whatever you want to call it, right? We have the issues of copy and write. Everything that we do on the internet is a copy. When we stream on a song, it's a copy. When I download something, of course, it's a copy. Every access to information creates copies. So we have computers given away to people in Africa. We have the growth of Pirate Bay, which is absolutely explosive. People sharing on mobile phones, iPhones have built-in sharing. If you haven't noticed, you can share on the iPhone. The whole world is connecting and copying away as if there was no tomorrow. And again, this is only the tip of the iceberg. On the other hand, we have rights. This is the law. It's not legal. We have those rights. But what are we doing? Of course, we're sending good lawyers after our rights. Right, we're letting people uh, be sued in court. We have all kinds of funny pamphlets and ads and, and YouTube downtakes. And, you know, we sit on the copyright, but we do end up with this. We end up with constant copying, and this is going to happen, of course, with books, motion pictures, films, television, JPEGs, you name it, and, of course, downbeat album sales. So what's the story here? You don't have to be a futurist to see that the current way idea of forcing people to consume music differently will not work. It doesn't take much to see that after five years of lawsuits. We're not going to get money out of the force of people into different habits. As these quotes show, sometimes you just have the wrong assumptions. People don't want to pay, they don't want to give you money, 
I think we need to review those assumptions. And we need to think a little bit further than this. It's my money and I need it now. 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 I think you got the point. This is not all about saying, well, I should finally get paid. Of course, that's correct, but we're going to have to think of this a little bit differently than in this upfront way that we have been. Refusal so far has been fruitless. Where has all that money gone from the lawsuits? Not to the artist, not to the creators, somewhere else. It's time to switch to permission and to collect. Google's Eric Schmidt made a deal with the book publishers, gave them $125 million dollars as a down payment for revenue sharing of books on the web, a 70-30 deal. How come they can do those deals? Eric Schmidt says, we write large checks when we have a great strategy. Let's go get the check. Let's make a deal, and a deal he wants to do. So this river of information that we have on the internet, all the stuff that's coming down the pike, we're just sort of throwing sticks in it with our various regulations and DRM and all the Everybody that's out on the web, they know it can be bypassed. What we need is a life raft. We need to float a boat down this river and get on it and make money with what is happening. We are not going to stop this river. This river is only a small creek now. It's going to be an ocean in two years. We need a boat, a new collective license for the use of music on the internet. A license that lets people do what they're doing and pays us in the process. Now, how would it look like? I'm going to take a stab at it. The new concept, however, of disconnecting file sharing internet users is not a life raft. It's just another bet on the sinking ship of control. I mean, imagine this. We're going to see what people are doing and then disconnect them. How does that get anyone paid except for the lawyers? once again, is not going to make money for the creators. You cannot fax a cat, no matter how hard you try. <laughs> that is exactly the same thing. Lots of people have tried. This isn't going to work, except for maybe the fax machine. So what I'm proposing is all these constituents, the telecoms, content companies, the government, to collaborate to think about a collective license that actually works for the user, as again, Google China says, mutual interest rather than monopoly. By the way, Google is not one of my clients, so I'm not just mentioning for that reason. Mutual interest rather than monopoly is the key to success. And here's the question. Do we have mutual interest here? I think we do. We have mutual interest with every single piece of that equation that we're looking at right now. So how would it work? The customers, the users that are sitting on top of the networks, of course, they need to get a license from the music companies, from the labels, the publishers, the rights organizations. A payment is made on a revenue share and license fee per user that's fixed, just like radio is a fixed license that you can make availability of if you so wish to do. That money is paid into what Jim Griffin, my friend that works at Warner, says, the pool of money the pool of money and the fair way to split it up. I'm going to show you how large that pool is. But before we get there and the ISPs start screaming about paying, they're not going to be ones that pay. We have advertisers, social networks, search engines, portals. In China, Google is already paying for music. 30,000 Chinese artists are free on the Google search engine in China because Google makes the payment as part of a revenue share. So we take this money, these brands that want to align with artists and genres, we bring it over to the user, and the result is this. It's payments of all kinds, which I will go into more detail soon, and the government, of course, blessing it, so to speak. Now, if you're saying, well, how would this work? I think advertising that we know today is pretty much dead. Nobody wants to see internet ads or disruptive ads. We're looking at new kinds of advertising. We're looking at a pool of roughly about uh, 250 billion euros a year that is uh, destined to be digital and interactive advertising in five years. That is the percentage projected to be online digital 
and interactive and advertising, which means basically content. That's a fairly nice chunk. If we can get 10% of revenues of advertising portals, search engines, ISPs, of revenues related to music, that's quite good. Right now, that would be in the case of Google, would be $50 million a month just from the AdWords. One euro a week would solve our problem. I'll give you some numbers. How do you get that euro? Because we do have to get the money. Advertising, marketing subsidies by the ISPs, which they're willing to do, I think. Device maker subsidies. Why do we have Nokia comes with music? The network comes with the music. Why don't we let Nokia pay for a piece of that network to give it to us, the user? We have user payments. That's also an option. If you don't want to see ads, you can make a payment. We can bundle it with a TV and radio license. That sounds like a tax. I don't like it, but some countries would. And there's many other ways to raise the euro. It's not rocket science. Let's look at the numbers that we see here. 500 million euros per week for 500 million people in Europe paying one euro. From all different sources, not them directly paying it, but some of them. Creating the flow of money out of all of these options, we're looking roughly at a size of 26 billion euros per year for a new voluntary collective license. Right? Why aren't we doing this? I think you know there are issues of control. But a collective license is the answer for this, and we've been talking about this since my book, 2005, Music Like Water. So if this sounds familiar, there's a good reason. It's radio. This is exactly what's happening in radio. Right? If radio is licensed, everybody gets to use, everybody who wants to start a station has the radio license. So, in about 100 years ago, we had the radio on the license, creating money for us, the creators. And now we can have the internet and the license create money for us, the creators. It's not rocket science, it requires a license. Why will this happen? Because we have mutual interest. We're in the same raft. ISPs will not be happy without music. The users will hate it if they get disconnected. The governments hate it when people are criminalized. We're all in the same boat. So now you're saying, okay, that sounds all great, but gee, I'm confused. You know, I'm going off into the future here or something. But we're not. Let me show you why not. I think I'm pretty much out of time, but I'm going to go through it. I'm going to wrap up, I swear. This is a bad thing, right? The value of a copy is diminishing. But the good thing is this. Everything else, the value of context, describing music, recommendations, groups, peering, sharing, all these things are going up. The value of the experience goes up. The value of the packaging goes up. Everything else goes up. Why don't we make the money from this? Why are we so stuck on selling copies? Why don't we go where the money is in the future and also the love and parenthesis of the user? Since I have to wrap up, I'm going to skip ahead. One more slide, I swear. Uh, you can download this later tonight at mediafuturist.com. Just let me summarize here quite quickly. So my proposition, let's do right what's right for, let's do what's right for compensation, not for control. Let's generate further revenues for the creators, not the lawyers, even though they should get paid as well, of course. Let's do what's right for social, cultural, and for business reasons, and let's put a new collective license for music on the internet in place and solve this problem. Let's reduce the control key, go from close to open, and as Winston Churchill says, we make a living by what we get, we make a life by what we give. Thank you very much.